As the presidential race begins, what are the chances of Bola Abed as presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress in Nigeria's 2023 general election? To analyze this on The Breakfast this morning. Also on The Breakfast, we take an in-depth look at the analyzing of today's newspaper headlines. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. You're welcome. My name is Kofi Bartels. I am Messi Bopo. All right, it's a brand new morning, and of course, um, uh, we have been having a, a few days or weeks of uh, uh, people being served political breakfast. Mercy, I think that is the new uh, the new language on the streets. You know, the young people are saying about you know political upsets um, or political upsets rather. Uh, they say you go to your breakfast. Yes, that's what they say. So, for instance, those who lose uh, the party primaries, they say they have been set breakfast. Or in, in a Nigerian pidgin uh, English, them don't chop breakfast. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> last night, um, Chukuka Moye and King Simogalu, they were set breakfast at midnight. <laughs> and uh, it was quite interesting. Have you I heard like the how name? you say it. Yes. Have you heard the name um, Dumebi Kachiku before? No. It doesn't ring a bell. But you've heard of King Simogalu. Why not? You've heard of uh, Chukuka Moe. Why not? All right, buddy. How would you feel? How would you react if you learned that uh, Dumebi Kachiku dusted Kingsley Mugalu and Chukuka Moe at the ADC presidential primary and comfortably picked the ticket? I would say this is Nigeria. You did them like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it comes to politics in this country, it's the more you look, the less you see. There are a lot of dynamics at play, a lot of things that go on, including underhand tactics. You know, so these are all, this all, you know, um, come together as the dynamics and the challenges that uh, uh, the, the, the candidates face. Now, you think about it, uh, uh, candidates that have done so much to sell the, the African Democratic Congress, which is the ADC, candidates that have done so much to sell that party, um, to promote it, and that have a very high profile, could not even beat an unknown well, of course, he's not unknown to a lot of people. But politically, he is unknown. You know, even members of the party or supporters were not even aware of this guy. You know, so um, it's quite interesting to see, um, and we'll be monitoring activities in the Action African Democratic Congress uh, already. But um, looking at what people have been talking, uh, the emergence of Bola Metinubu as um, uh, the flagbearer of the All Progressive Congress has generated a lot of reactions online. Uh, we hear that apart from that. Uh, uh, he has received a congratulatory message from Al Haji uh, Atiku Buka. But well, let's look at the, the reactions to uh, Tinubu's emergence. What are some of the things that we've been seeing? Mercy. Well, I mean, it's a lot. Uh, the energy is different on different levels, and you have older persons who are really saying that he's been very strategic, has, has been very strategic. And some people are saying, what, what do you mean by strategic? Are we talking about, you know, money superiority at this point in time? Who, who has more money to chunk out? And because at the end of the day, our politics, as much as we want to deny it and say, oh, we don't have a proof and it's what it is. But you can also take out the fact that, you know, money politics dominate our electoral process. And, and that's what we see every other time. And uh, looking at all the issues, the criteria. But usually, you find out that there are no permanent friends, uh, no permanent enemies, but just permanent interest. And so, I could be your friend today. Uh, I could be your enemy tomorrow. But most importantly, I could switch. And what would happen would be interest. So wherever interest is being served, or uh, you have your interest being up, up, um, upheld, or if you like to say, uh, your interest has been considered, then you would always tilt to that part where interests would be considered. And I say that every other time, the reason why we are where today and until we're able to look beyond all of this, then we will continue to be where we are today until we have people in different sphere, in different strata, who would put national interest above, above above um, personal interest. And that's when we're going to, you know, talk about being fair with our policy. So it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot, you know, the energy to begin to talk about all of this. Mm. 
It's very strong. <laughs> oh, so, 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 I mean, uh, Bola Batinbu, you know, made some, some statements during uh, his acceptance speech. Um, he said, number, first of all, one of the things he said was, um, he talked about, he made, made mention of uh, Vice President Emil Shiba, you know, people have been waiting or waiting to hear his speech and to see whether he will make mention of Vice President Emil Shiba, uh, uh, being, you know, his adversary in this political race, but also uh, being of his uh, political um, mentee of sorts, a political ally, let's call it that, you know. Um, and he, he said to, Bo, to uh, uh, Professor Emil Shiba, um, that uh, you have been a pillar of support to um, President Muhammad Buhari, you've supported him well. He also, you know, spoke to Ahmed Lawan, Senate President, and he said that um, even though you challenged me, um, it's I still I still recognize you as uh, the Senate President who stabilized the ship of the nation's uh, um, uh, judiciary, you know, legislature. Sorry, uh, you can go back and lick your wounds. Now, some people read some meaning into that, but he was just joking. You can go back and lick your wounds, and um, it's still it's politics, you know. But he had a lot of praise, eulogy for uh, Femi Bajabiamila, uh, the House of Red Speaker, who said, you know, played a role in, in ensuring that things worked well for him, Tinubu. And of course, Bajabiamila remained loyal to him till the end. Tinubu also mentioned the names of all those individuals who stepped down for him at that primary. Each and every mentioned their names and um, thanked them. Of course, you know, if he wins, they will not go home empty handed. You know, Tibu, we told, never forgets his, um, those who help him. And we told you also he forgives easily and knows that politics is a marathon, not a sprint. So um, these are some of the things he said. He, 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 he threw some jokes at President uh, Buhari. But Tibu, when it comes to the issues, he talked about the Nigerian economy. And he tried to, you know, sell the All Progressives Congress as a, as a forward thinking party when you talk about the Nigerian economy. He said, you know, how can Nigeria at this day and age, we use cars, but we can't even manufacture the brake pads of these cars. You know, some people said, hey, this man is talking about car manufacturing. Is he using any of the local cars, like Innocent and all that? But um, that was what he said. And Tinubu also used his speech to, to um, try and bridge the divide between the two leading faiths in the, in the country, you know, the Islamic faith and the Christian faith, and try to say, hey, we're all one. The both religions preach love. You know, and that um, Nigeria is more important than every religion. Before you were born, you didn't have a religion. You were born and you simply adopted the religion of your parents. But we're all human beings. He also tried to sell the party and said the party is not a party of bar barbarians. You know, they're not barbaric. Um, and that Nigerians need to understand that. He talked about being a progressive. He tried to pass a message of, of, of love, of tolerance, of patience. He said, quote, progress isn't about killing each other. It is not. Love is about embracing one another. So this is sort of things that, um, you know, he tried to, you know, he talked about. And it sounded a, a bit inspirational, you know, to be honest. But some people are saying, mercy, uh, that, uh, oh, we had the same thing during the um, 2015 elections and see where it landed us. So we're not going to take what you're saying like that. Um, that's that's, that's what, what some things he said. Quite interesting. And uh, it's been a day of people challenging each other. But another aspect of the entire uh, Tinubu speech and his emergence was um, his health. Okay, so there are three or four instances. The videos are all over the internet, in all over WhatsApp. The first one uh, was when he was making his way to go give his speech. He had to be helped to come down from the, uh, the VIP area. That was one. Uh, when he was standing to give his speech, he was trying to flip from one sheet uh, of paper uh, to one page to the next, uh, you know, uh, in a bunch of papers he carried. His, uh, I think his hands were shaking a bit. And uh, when he gave his uh, accepted speech, he tried to uh, you know, put on the microphone, his right hand shook a bit, shook a bit. And then when he was holding the, uh, the flag handed over to him by President Buhari, uh, his hand shook a bit and he had to be helped by uh, the party chairman, Abdullahi uh, Adamu, to hold um, the flag. Now, this hasn't picked on by people you know, out there, especially on social media, say, media to say uh, uh, Tinbu may not be uh, fiscally uh, fit or sound to be the president. And these are some of the things they've raised. Of course, these are things people will talk about, all because they want to see the best for Nigeria. Time will tell. Time will tell. Definitely, time will tell. But you also cannot take out the fact that um, um, you know, Bola Akma Tinubu is very 
instrumental to having the president becoming the president, even though the presidency has come out to say, oh, he wasn't, you know, just your effort, it was collective in that statement, that's what he meant, I mean, to me. But I don't know what interpretation we, I mean, we probably would have, but it's politics. Interest would always play. I mean, uh, interests, it's where your interests is being respected. That's what you tilt towards. Lawan and Bajabia Mila, are very, I mean, they are products today, they, they, what they are, because he recommended. It, it's what happens, it's negotiation, it's politics. And so I'd say, hey, I'm going to chunking a lot of money. Imagine that you're going to become a president. You're, you're conversing to become a president. You're vying to become a president. And I say, Kofi, I'm going to put in a lot of money. It's business. It has become business. And so who really cares? Really, whether or not we want to agree with that, that's what it is. Because at the end of the day, I'm chunking a lot of money, and you say, hey, I'm going to compensate to you. With what? political positions or you are being allowed to you know recommend at the end of the day and that's why we have the country where it is today where you constantly have policies because if you look at the policies so far policies don't reflect the interest of the people they, inf they reflect the interest of the elite I mean a, a select group of persons and that's what it is so but we, we, we can really um, I mean want to wake up and and act like, you know, this is actually very different. Uh, you have actually mentioned a lot that has uh, transpired. Yes. Uh, b before we go to the next room, see, I'm told we have a video to, uh, to roll. So let's uh, quickly uh, take that and we'll be right back. Excellency, the President of Federal Republic Nigeria, Mamadou Buhari, and the Mama of the Nation, Mrs. Aisha Buhari. the First Lady of Nigeria. Today is another historic day. And it thanks to God Almighty that you are living heavy to war, to witness it. We are very grateful to you, Mama Dibuari, G. CFR. The Vice President, a very good and supporting pillar, a good assistant to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. I thank GCON, we thank you for being steady and a good support to our president. Well, to you, the legislature, Senate President. Senator Ahmed Lawan, I would have been a little upset because you compete with me. But that is over now. Since you can easily lick your wound, it doesn't take away from thanking you for the past cooperation, collaboration, and cool-headedness to build our country. To the chairman of the party, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, it appeared 
some weeks back that some newspapers and many people were ready to write obituary of this party. Yes, we pull together and pull ourselves as a cat of nine lives. President Mamadou Buhari, please forgive me for keeping you this long. I didn't expect to win. I win. I must be intoxicated for victory. <laughs> what can I do? Today, today is the only day I can punish you. Make you sit long. Forgive me, though. No. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. God bless APC. God, get rid of all the PDP geckos. All right. So um, um, that's that's uh, um, the acceptance speech. Quite quite a lot of things, but um, of course, like, like we said earlier, questions on uh, uh, the, the 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 fiscal, uh, you know, uh, stoutness. Let's call it that of uh, um, Bola Metinbu with uh, the speech he gave and. You know his um, his fiscal condition while giving the speech performance throughout. But we must also admit that you know they spent quite some time at the venue. You know for the age, you know that staying there overnight, all those hours and everything without rest, um, could make one it be a bit weak. Um, so we will look at what happens going forward. Uh, President Buhari also had such questions over his health. You can see how brisk he was. He went home that night. Uh, went to refresh uh, and came back. I think he took a rest and took some breakfast and all that, took his medications and came back. Uh, Buhari was really brisk. There were questions about his health, uh, but he's made it through. Um, he was brisk even the way he took the flag, gave it to Timbu, took it, handed it over to those who were to hold it, then stood and took the pictures and walked. <laughs> he was don't, okay. Don't, don't forget that, so, you so, know, once upon a time, but, um, we're talking about a president who um, was also military head of state. I mean, you can't take that out, even if you want to add the age. So, them say, very old soldier, know they die. <laughs> you already know. Mm -hmm. You already know that. Uh, mm -hmm. Very commendable. But let's see how all of this pans out. I mean, uh, sometimes you have all of the statement, comments being made. It's okay. It's politics. Uh, the, uh, um, what's it called again? You know, at the political party level. And some persons have argued that this has been a lot of transparent. It, democracy has actually happened. It's not been an easy, uh, what you have to call it, you know, an easy competition. And so you have a lot of contenders at the end of the day. It's, it, it's good for our democracy. And what it is, is what the party actually already have. And so emerging as a winner of the party is uh, former governor of Lagos State. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but, of but, but you, he has you the supporters, mentioned... you know, and then you have those who are jubilating. There was a video of um, MC Olomo, you know, dancing. Why not? You know, and, Were and, you expecting and, different? And I mean, jubilating. if you didn't see yeah, MC yeah, Olomo just, just dance, there was a video of MC Olomo dancing. But just quickly, I mean, but my question and, is, and, if, and you see, if you didn't see, if you didn't see MC Olomo jubilate, would it be would I, would that have been normal to you? No, I was I was just trying to say that there was a video of MC Olomo, you know, jubilating. Oh, okay. Uh, you had some of the. Um, I think they say with any RTW officials. I don't know what that's true because it's no longer there. Um, and people reacted to this as well. Some people were, were you know, just joking with the whole situation, it's calling him the incoming Minister of Transportation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a video of, uh, I think it was Popo, uh, walking into an office with a big suit and uh, a portico portamanto, you know, briefcase <laughs> or Panama, something like that. that. Yeah, oversized suit. And then they, they said uh, that was. Um, uh, M. Solomon reporting to work on the first day as a minister of transportation. <laughs> but let's see how you know, all of uh, I mean, I mean, I mean these things are, this, this things are not of, different. Yeah. I mean, mm. Kofi, these things are not. I, I, I made an example and I say that if I invest, whether I'm investing financially, that's what happens. It's, it's an investment. Politics in Nigeria. And some people want to say, hey, it, it goes beyond Nigeria. We have seen that that has become an investment. People, even at the point where you have a lot of persons vying for 
offices. So for instance, about 22 candidates or aspirants came out to via, I mean to uh, contest the position to become the flag bearer of the party. So you begin to ask yourself, really? But we need to move away from that uh, for the want of time. And uh, let's also look at the fact that uh, the former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, congratulated, you know, Bola Ahmad Tinubu. And via his Twitter handle, he said, uh, congratulations, official Bat, on your emergence as your party presidential candidate. It has been a hard-fought contest that you prevail confirms your tenacity. Hey, hey, this is what uh, you know is written. And that also has uh, gotten a lot of people talking about it. But you know one thing that people say about politics is that politics should not be a do or die affair. And so uh, spirit of sportsmanship, the fact that you, it, it, it's it. It could just be that you're just being naturally who you are, but people would begin to have connotations and have interpretations to every action, especially at a time where you are, you know, in the opposition. So far, some persons have said that the PDP as an opposition has not fared properly. I mean, they haven't done very well. And some people are saying that this might just also be uh, what we're looking at in 2023. So uh, the fact that you have him sending this congratulatory message, uh, it might just be a replica. Oh, it, it, it's done. It's, it, it's, it's game over. In 2023, this is what's going to happen. Well, fingers across, and let's see how all of this pans out, because is, we is, cannot. Is this, is this like uh, maybe it's because he's congratulating him? But, but, you know, but you know how Nigerians can be. I mean, you know how we can be with all of these uh, conspiracy theory yeah, and I, I with think, all of these permutations. I, I think we have a, a lot of political naivety from supporters of uh, Peter B. Extreme political naivety. Oh, I didn't mention it. Ex extreme high case of political ignorance and, and um, uh, not being aware. Not all, but most, from what I see, uh, the base is on Twitter. It's, Peter B. Has, has, been, has been, you know, um, has emerged as um, the preferred candidate for a lot of Nigerians who are looking for uh, uh, something different, for a third force to emerge. You know, but it, it doesn't mean that, that everything will change overnight. It doesn't mean that the dynamics of politics in, in the country are, have changed just because you wish to see a change. You know, it doesn't mean you know, sentiments over elections. For instance, somebody was, was replying to Atiko Street and said, um, you didn't congratulate Peter B. What on God's earth is that? You know, um, this shows that the more you, uh, the more you are scared, uh, you are scared of an opponent who has higher chances. You see, things don't work that way. Things don't work that way. Um, uh, for me, it's even like a big red flag that uh, P.O. P.O. Peter B. You know, put out a congratulatory tweet uh, to a ticket worker and called him his leader and friend. Called him his leader. Um, some would say it's humility. You know, um, so so these are dynamics. Atiku and Tinubu are uh, the old stock, you understand. They've been there for, for, for years. And they know that despite the fact that they're divided by political lines, party lines, that they're all on the same boat, all on the same ship, you know. And um, they have a history of being together as a part of the Shehu Musayardo political family, you know. So they, they were in that, in that clique, if you want to call it that. Um, another one that we should not forget is the fact that um, uh, another presidential candidate has emerged for the uh, Labour Party, uh, a faction of the Labour Party. His name is um, Jude Ezenwafo. Of course, um, the judge, you know, call, shadowed the case involving the leadership tussle, uh, the factional battle in Labour Party for hearing on June 30. So waiting for that, and let's see if, um, if, you know, Peter B's faction will emerge, you know. But um, it's okay for politicians to congratulate themselves. Don't be bothered about it. I'm not talking to you now. I'm talking to those out there who <laughs> are. Most it's okay. Definitely. It, it's nothing wrong. These, these guys are on another level. They think differently. It's not important things, you know. Anyway, uh, final one. Rabi Musa Kwankos emerged as uh, the flag bearer presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party. I think this is just a, a ceremonial. It was already for me, or to me, uh, the candidate of this party. I mean, the man basically acquired the party structures, you know. He, not acquired that he, he paid money for it, but I mean that, you know, his allies and his um, political um, uh, structure 
took over NNPP. You can look at the party chairman as this man. You know, so NNPP is seen as a machine for um, uh, Kwan Kwaso, and he has done the needful. And, and you can see the sagacity that he has, he has displayed. Kwan Kwaso has, has not just displayed sagacity. He has displayed um, a, a, a high understanding of the Nigerian political system, that you don't just walk into a party and put yourself there like a, a sacrificial goat, you know, that will be slaughtered if someone just decides to slaughter you. He went in with a structure and seized the NNPP. All right? Nobody can do anything to Kwan Kwasu just like that. Whereas for someone like Peter B, he's on his own. I mean, does he have, who does he have in the party hierarchy? You know what I'm saying? I mean, who, I mean, so, so, why, have, so, so, so yeah. why begin to, to talk about that? I remember very well, and I'm sure that we're going to have him in no time, you know, to look at all of this. Ezekiel Yai talk, he has constantly on this particular platform talk about the fact that, you know, Rabbi Ukankwaso would definitely be of the NNPP. He will become flag bearer. It's predictable. You he can actually already tell. No, he, had, he, he got that party. So, so he got that party. At what point did he get the party while he was still a member of, you know, the People's Democratic Party? No, it's, it's in the news. I mean, he just moved. No, no. Yeah. That, that's, what ex that's exactly what I'm saying. So you, before getting a party, if you were a member of a certain political party, that's what it is. So it would therefore mean that a lot of people could be with a party. So you could be here, but you're having some anti-party activity. It was very glaring every other time that you had statement. And you were saying that, oh, he had that structure already. How can you be with a certain brand and you are identifying? It feels like you already have structures. And that's why I already knew. So what's happening with Tipi Tobi right now? It's not news. It's not news. Because over time, you have been a member of the People's Democratic Party. It wouldn't be just magic for you to wake up and then all of a sudden, and then you say, okay, hey, I'm no longer of this party, a member of this party, and I don't belong to a certain party, and you think you're going to get a ticket, at just, uh, you're just going to have a faction, or you're, having, you're going to have everybody who just give you a beer hug, and they say, welcome to the party. You are the man we have been waiting for, really. It doesn't happen we, that we, way. We, we, we have to move <laughs> on. I like, I, like, I like the bear hug you talked about. Oh, well. Um, but what I mean, it, it's still early days. We will be, we'll be right back. Let's take a short break. And when we come back, I will call the papers saying this morning. <laughs>